I'm just going to take a, a, a few minutes just to talk, talk about tetra, uh, tetraploid SNPs. We've kind of, we, I thought we would be further along at this point, um, but it's taken us a lot longer to move through this, um, dip, you know, the diploid analysis, but I, I feel that we've, we've gotten it uh, right to this point. And so uh, during the week, I have a, uh, a talk where I go into more of the details of those two diploid maps. And so um, uh, I'll presenting more of the data. I was kind of doing more of the process of walking, walking through this right now for you as, a, as a, the, the mechanics of it. So with, uh, as, as potato breeders, we really want to be able to use tetrapoid populations. And, um, and so does this really, how do the SNPs behave in the tetraploid um, uh, material? And so we're using the, uh, you know, Illumina platform and we're using the Genome Studio uh, software. And there's, so we're using this iScan system and they call it microarray base, but there's a, a bead express system and I'm going to come back, you know, come back to that. So there's, there's other platforms within um, Illumina that, that also can be used that don't require you to, well, you, you can use a, a less number of SNPs, ones that maybe are only important to you. Um, okay, so with the tetrapoid, we got to comp, it gets a little more complicated because uh, we have, you know, uh, five uh, marker classes. Um, and, but then there's also this question about if we have any nulls and how does, how does that play, play into that. And, but when we're working with the diploids, we really just have the, the, the three clusters. So Candy Hansi, you know, in looking at the, the data coming out of SOLCAP, you know, we have the, the russet mapping population, plus we also have some tetraploid uh, genotypes in the panel, has, has been able to look at the data from a, from a, a tetraploid uh, point of view. And so, this to, here is a nice situation where we have the five good clusters uh, to work with. Um, I just want to point out here that you, you can see what happens is that the Genome Studio software kind of puts a circle around the different clusters. And so if they fall outside of that, what you want to, you, those are the ones that you want to exclude from your, from your analysis, okay? Or, or consider, consider excluding. And so, What's, when you're dealing with the tetrapods, you have all different types of uh, um, segregate, uh, segregating um, popul uh, or segregating progeny we can have here. You know, uh, we're going to have the, the five different uh, gene genotypic classes, and and then you have different complex segregation ratios. You know, you have the one to four to one up here, and then you have the one to eight to eighteen to eight to one. And so uh, I think even the potato breeders sitting in the room here, if we ask you to kind of uh, calculate that out, might get uh, get stuck for a few minutes trying to uh, work work your way through that. So looking at our um, at our data here, is that Candy feels that these are some I ideal uh, SNP markers in terms of the way that they're sorting into the different um, different uh, uh, um, genotypic classes. You know, so, so you got to be really careful on handling the, the data. So in the diploids, everything was based on a three cluster, cluster call I told you about. Candy going through SNP, you know, SNP by SNP. And so she's also doing it now from a, from a te tetraploid um, uh, uh, point of view. And so what you can see here is as a this, you know, these have been our you know, screenshots from the Genome Studio, and so what she did was she was color coding within the, you know, the the full uh, panel of material that she was working with, the tetraploid uh, uh, segregate tetraploid russet mapping population, and so here we're expecting the one to four to one segregation ratio when we have a duplex parent across the homozygote, and you can see them falling into those categories. And then over here in the, in the other screenshot, um, we had the, a duplex parent cross to the other duplex parent. And you can see the, them falling into the 1 to 8 to 18 to 8 to 1 
uh, segregation pattern. So this is, to me, very exciting that we can have this type of um, uh, segregation data. So, so when you w work through the, this five cluster calling, you know, so, so uh, Candy's uh, still working on it, you know, on the, on the QC, but, um, but this is what, you know, what she's saying based upon the theta values. Remember I talked about those theta values in the, in the, genome, in the genome studio. And so 2,645 fall into five clusters and 858 fall into the four clusters and so on. So, uh, so there are a number of SNPs that are going to be useful in, in being able to call at, you know, at this five genotypic uh, uh, class. But I think you want to go and look at them yourself in your, in your populations there. 